Louisiana has a colorful and sordid history, but it's important to put all that in perspective. You see, back when the French founded and began populating Louisiana, they had a tough time getting folks here. It's really hard to believe. 100 degrees, 99% humidity, insect infested. Those people clearly weren't as smart as we are. So what they did in order to get folks here is they offered freedom to their prisoners. They offered freedom. They said, prisoners in, in the French jails, we're going to set you free in New Orleans, in South Louisiana. So anyone who wonders why our state has such a sordid history, such a colorful history, only needs to go back to the background. In fact, Congressman Billy Tozan used to describe our state as being half underwater and half under indictment. <laughs> which is true, or was true, uh, but we're making progress. I know many times uh, you hear people say, thank God for Mississippi and Alabama. On those national rating sheets, you, you see, uh, where are we right down, you know, you, you look for the best in the country, and you look down at the bottom and, you know, make sure Mississippi's giving you that buffer at number 50. <laughs> and quick sidebar there, as you think about it. So we populated the prisoners here, we kicked them out, where'd they go? They went over to the east and north. <laughs> in any case, I want to talk to you about the new Louisiana. I want to talk to you about your Louisiana. Today, Louisiana is the number one export state in the country. Today, Louisiana was named the number two boomtown in America. Today, Louisiana was named by American Express as having the fourth highest growth, growth rate for women-owned businesses. Today, America, excuse me, the, uh, Louisiana was, was found to be the top state for digital media company performance. We also have been found to have the third best growth rate, income growth rate in the country. We're number one in ethics and related to financial disclosures. We um, are top 10 in the United States in terms of, of business climate. And we've been named the state of the year for four of the past five years. Forbes called us the most improved state. Movie Maker Magazine said we were number three in the country in independent filmmaking. We were named, our New Orleans was named the most improved metro in the country. Bankrate.com said South Louisiana was the second best place in the country to retire. And Southeast Louisiana was described as America's brain magnet. We've come a long way. Take a look at this. You can look at that and you smile. You think about all the great things that Louisiana has to offer. Whether it's, it's Jazz Fest, or it's Mardi Gras, or it's the amazing food or the history here. Nobody has that. Louisiana is such a unique place. We have such amazing, amazing resources here. We have amazing, amazing food. Every time I look at that crawfish up there, start thinking back to who in the hell said, you know what, we ought to eat that. <laughs> or the oyster, you know, open it up for the first time. Wow, that looks good. <laughs> but we did it, and we make it good here. It's pretty awesome. So the Atchafalaya Basin Program kicked off a PR campaign recently, and I love this slogan, America's Foreign Country. I, you know, and people think swamp people and all that, and it's true, but I don't think it's limited to the basin. I think it's Louisiana. No one has the things that we have to offer. No other state has such rich history, culture, and such amazing natural resources. So let's talk a little bit about some of those today. In the maritime and the trade industry, we have five of the top 15 ports in the nation right here in Louisiana. We can access 31 states with maritime commerce, the cheapest, most efficient means of transportation. Right here. We, um, we actually send approximately 20% of all of the maritime commerce in this country through our waterways, through the Mississippi River system, the Gulf Intracoastal Waterway. No one comes close to that statistic. We have this strategic advantage of the river system and the Intracoastal Waterway system. We even can't screw it up. Five of the top ports in the country. On the energy side, Louisiana has, uh, we're one of the top producers of oil and gas in the country. 
In fact, in some years, we've brought in 90% of the offshore energy production in the United States. We have some of the top reserves of oil and gas. We have some of the top refining capacity. In fact, when you look at it cumulatively, Louisiana either produces, transports, or refines up to one-third of the oil and gas in this country. In this same area that's so energy-rich, this same area is the top habitat for migratory waterfowl and songbirds. They come down the Mississippi River Flyway, they hang out in South Louisiana wetlands. People come from all over to, to bird watch and to shoot them. <laughs> <laughs> and on the seafood side, and I see some of you guys saying, yeah, I love to fish. And you think you're good at it. The reality is, it's easy here. <laughs> we have the most... <laughs> It's fishing in a barrel, guys. We have the most productive estuary in North America. The confluence of that river system in the Gulf, it's an amazingly productive area. So yes, we have top shrimp production, top oyster production, top crawfish production, top blue crab production. In fact, we have more seafood production than anywhere else in the continental United States in terms of commercial seafood. Place is amazing. I wanna show you another side of Louisiana. I talked about how far we've come. We've talked about all the great resources and assets that we have here. But there's another side that's creeping up from the south. Our house was right here at 1826 Tennessee Street. It lifted off its foundation and actually became a boat floating up the middle of the street uh, bypassing a lot of those oak trees, actually m maneuvering from here to 1617 Tennessee Street. And at 1617 Tennessee Street, it hit a tree, basically stopped us, but it began to break up. There was another house that we actually got on eventually. But in trying to get on, we lost my granddaughter. In trying to get onto that house, my mother actually went under the water three times, and the third time she drowned, came up. We resuscitated, put her on the roof of the house, brought her back to life, only to have her die on that same roof later. So we actually spent the whole hurricane fighting for our lives. Where my grandmother and grandfather lived and where we lived too is now under about, I would say, six to eight inches of water most of the time. It, it's just not a place where you want to live anymore. There was a little cemetery there where my sister and other relatives were buried. But then after a while, this washed all away and the tombs, I don't even know where the cemetery was at today because they they all went down the water, uh, just took over, and that was the end of the cemetery there. You see, over the last 80 years, our state's lost about 1,900 square miles of our coast. 1,900 square miles, the Gulf of Mexico has encroached. It's come closer. It's made our communities more vulnerable, as we've seen in recent hurricanes. This same area... Um, moving forward, looking prospectively, is expected to lose a greater rate or have a greater rate of land loss than we've seen looking backwards. Let me put it in perspective. 1,900 square miles is what we've lost in 80 years. That's the state of Rhode Island wiped off the map. That's the land area in Delaware gone. Can you imagine those states sitting back and allowing that to happen? Absolutely not. We may lose 1,750 miles over the next 50 years without aggressive action. You think Hurricane Katrina was bad? See what happens when the Gulf is that much closer. Some scientists even say, this is what our coast is going to look like on the right by 2100. You can see that the, the coastline of Louisiana is now just south of Baton Rouge. Now, those of you fishermen are in here getting excited, saying, man, that's going to cut my drive in half or so. But folks, 2 million people live in South Louisiana. 65% of our state's economy is based here. This is where our natural resources are. That's unacceptable. What's happened is uh, this is what our state used to look like. These were all the rivers and distributaries and bayous 
that this huge watershed from Montana to Canada to New York would drain down with all the sediment. It would, it would drop out and deposit in the coastal area. The state of Louisiana was growing three quarters of a square mile per year. We were on a trajectory, if left unimpeded, to be bigger than the state of Texas instead of just better. <laughs> I apologize. I'm sure there's some Aggies in here. You're supposed to be down the hall finger painting. Um, <laughs> so this is what's happened. We've taken the rivers and we've confined them. We've taken the sediment and confined them. And so now all that sediment drops off into the deep waters of the Gulf of Mexico where it does us no good. And we overnight, when these levees were built, when these rivers were changed, began losing up to 28 square miles of land per year. In 2005, after those major hurricanes, Katrina and Rita, we lost over 200 square miles of our coast in that one year. Washington's failing us. We've obviously been telling Congress and telling the White House about this for years. And you have some in Congress to say, oh, well, we can't spend money because that's liberal federal government spending and it's a bad investment. Really, Hurricane Katrina, Hurricane Rita, the 2005 storms have cost us $150 billion in federal taxpayer funds recovering from the disaster. $150 billion. Others may say, oh, well, we need to keep all this at the federal level and we need to grow the agencies and they need to be in charge of this. The federal agency in charge of this has spent $110 million over the last 20 years and hasn't put the first shovel in the ground to begin addressing the land loss that they caused. In fact, there's a study that was done by the Congressional Budget Office that says for every $1 you invest in levees and pump stations and, and, and protecting these communities and making the ecosystem more resilient, you get $3 in cost savings. FEMA did a study and said it was $4 in cost savings. I was listening to a speech by General Russell Allray, the, the, the general who led the cavalry into New Orleans following Hurricane Katrina. And he cited those two reports and he brought up a third one. And he said, I think it's $16 in cost savings for every $1 you invest. And so I'm sitting there in the audience and I'm the geek taking copious notes, go running up to him after him like, General, General, where did that come from? I want to read that report from cover to cover. He goes, man, I made that shit up. <laughs> but I believe it. And I do too. Now, I needed to, my, my young son's here, and I found myself in a little conflicted situation there. I need to take a teaching moment. Um, <laughs> I know I told you this morning that there's an exception using the S word um, when you drop your phone in the toilet. Um, <laughs> there's also an exception if you have a three-star general. So just <laughs> quick note, those are the only ones. Uh, but in Louisiana, um, we didn't take... Washington's feedback, Washington's position is being acceptable. We came in in 2008 and they had numerous agencies handling various aspects of, of community protection and ecosystem resilience, restoring our coast, protecting our citizens, our businesses, our homes, our culture, our future. And we started pulling them all together and said, guys, we have to stop all these disparate actions. We pulled them together, we developed one plan, one plan, and this is what we're going by. And as a matter of fact, we've taken areas, we've gone from this to this in a year. Not quite the time frame described in Genesis, but we're doing okay. <laughs> We've gone from here to here. Now, after Hurricane Katrina, after Hurricane Katrina, responding to the disaster, we've gone from the flood walls on the left to the huge ones on the right. We've built the largest continuous surge barrier in the world. We've built the largest pump station in the world to protect our citizens. And we're doing this because Louisiana is important. This state is important. And it's not acceptable to allow our state, our culture, our resources to be lost. But it's not just Louisiana. This is the projection for the country. Look at Florida. What's happening in Louisiana first is that our land is being lost. We're the canary in the coal mine. We're your canary in the coal mine. What we do here matters. The folks in Hurricane Sandy, New York, New Jersey, thought it was a Gulf Coast problem. They now understand differently. In fact, Congress spent about $60 billion to date responding to this disaster. Whether it's New York, it's Miami, 
actually thought this one might not be bad. We can just flood that place out. Yeah. <laughs> Let's wipe them off the map. Huh? <laughs> but look, guys, this is America. I mean, how great is this place? We've put people on the moon. We created the internet. We created the iPhone. We've harnessed electricity. We're remote controlling a drone on Mars. Are you kidding me? This place is amazing. And we have an opportunity once again to be innovative. Not to back down from adversity or challenges, but to take it head on and to be innovative. And to address this problem for Louisiana, for, United State, for the United States, and for the world. You see, pictures like this shouldn't ever be seen. This shouldn't be happening. Those videos that you saw, that should be something from the 1800s in a third world country, not here. We've come a long way in Louisiana, and we deserve better. Now, we have two choices. We can try and sustain this footprint on the left, or we can fight. We can fight to prevent that, what's happening on the right, if we do nothing. And I urge you, join us in this fight to ensure that Louisiana remains sustainable and that we export our solutions in technology, in science, in legal policy issues around the world to ensure that other communities don't experience or ever go through the death and destruction we did in Louisiana. Thank you.